Welcome to the Alpha Male 2.0 podcast, freedom-focused lifestyle design for men. Dating multiple attractive women, location-independent income, the freest lifestyle available to the modern day man. I am Caleb Jones, and today we're going to talk about using logic on women and whether or not women are entitled in the ways in which they behave in relationships. I think you will be surprised at what I have to say about this. So I have a video on my YouTube channel, one of them, I have several channels, as you know, but I have a video and I've also have several articles about this. I've written about this by books where you should not use logic on women when you're in a dating or relationship or marriage context and you're in an argument. If you if she's agitated and you start using logic, she's just going to explode and you're going to get nowhere. OK, using logic on women that they're dating is one of the dumbest things men do. In a business context, yes. In a non-dating, non-sexual, non-romantic context, yes, you can use logic on women. That's fine. But when you are dating her, having sex with her, living with her, what have you, and she's upset, and there's a disagreement, use a bunch of logic, you're just going to piss her off, and you're not going to get anywhere. It's the dumbest thing men do. It's the, one of the least effective ways to communicate to women because women are not men. Women are not robots. Women are not angels. They function very differently emotionally than men do. Uh, I was author John Gray who said many decades ago that women are always waiting for men to use more empathy and men are always waiting for women to calm down and start making sense. Correct. As I've said before, one of my favorite statements, men are dumb, women are insane. Both are true. And if you assume both are true in advance, it solves a lot of problems for you. So anyway, in that video, which was a year or two old now, someone watched it and left a comment. I don't normally talk about comments on this podcast, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, he left a very long comment. And I'm going to read it here in this podcast. And I'm going to respond to it. And it's um, the reason I'm going to read it is I know a lot of you guys feel this way because I've had similar comments and similar questions. Uh, the guy's name is John Clancy, not Tom Clancy, but John Clancy. And this is his comment. It goes a little long. It gets a little convoluted, but I will, uh, I'll straighten out at the end. So here is his comment. Quote, if we men can't use logic when arguing with women, especially if the woman is mad, then that means we must be very patient, calm, collected, understanding, and considerate in dealing with a woman gone mad. The thing is, aren't we giving the women some entitlement? I mean, women can be unreasonable, illogical, and irrational, while men can't be the same. Pause for a second, that is completely untrue. It depends on the context, I'll explain that in a minute. Going on with this comment. My point here is that such principle that we men must understand women for their irrational or unreasonable tendencies will give women entitlement in which it is somewhat a must for a man to just understand and be considered to the woman who is unreasonable and illogical. Women can therefore be demanding for their men that the latter have to always understand the former because it's natural for women to be unreasonable and illogical, while it is not natural for a man to be like that. Again, pause for a second. That is incorrect. Men can't be irrational. Have you seen Trump supporters? No, they can be irrational. Have you seen Bernie Sanders supporters? Yeah, have you seen Andrew Tate supporters? So to think that men can't be irrational, no. The context is different. I will discuss in a moment. Going on with his comment. Isn't that an obvious double standard? My take is that women have some entitlement to be unreasonable only when they are mad, angry, or upset, but when they are sober, when it is logic, reason, rationale should prevail. Okay, a few things. Number one, top of the list, the concept of fairness. Um, men are really big, well, I shouldn't say that. Men and women are both really big on the concept of fairness. And in the modern day collapsing Western world where we move towards socialism more every few years, more and more people are really into the concept of fairness more now than ever has been in my entire lifetime and I'm 50. So fairness is a really, really, really big thing for people. Just one problem. The concept of fairness does not exist in nature. The concept of fairness does not exist. Um, Scott Adams, who I recently talked about in my last podcast on how insane he is in his personal life, Scott Adams made a quote many, many years ago, pre-Trump, the pre-Trump Scott Adams, who I used to like. He has a quote, and I'm going to butcher it a little bit, but he basically says, the concept of fairness was invented so that stupid people could get involved into arguments. Right. There is no such thing as fairness. The concept does not exist. People made that shit up. Everyone is born with certain advantages and disadvantages. And it is true that some people are born innately 
with more advantages than disadvantages, both in how they are born genetically and how they are raised. For example, there are men out there, I've met a few of them, they're not very many, but they're out there, who were born really good looking, really fucking good looking, and smart, and tall. They were born with these traits. And they were born into a family with a loving mother, a loving father, who made a lot of money, who are multimillionaires. Okay? Now, none of that applied to me. <laughs> I was smart. I wasn't born super good looking. Uh, I was born smart. I was born into a family that was poor. Later they made money, but when I was a kid, they had nothing. So I was the opposite of that. And, and you probably were the opposite of that as well. But that happens. So then how can you possibly discuss the concept of fairness as a real thing? It isn't fair. It's not fair. I'll give you another example. Uh, as many of you know, my son is black. It's a long story. But when he was little, I had a little talk with him, a brief, and I basically said this. I didn't say exactly this, but this is the gist of what I said. Um, and this was, you know, he's in his 30s now, so you got to rewind the, the examples I've given here about 25 years, 20 years. Um, we basically said, I basically said, uh, you're black. That means the facts are, I don't care how right wing you are, but this is the truth. If you're a black guy living in the Western world, in the United States, if you want to achieve the same amount of stuff that a white guy achieves, you're going to have to work a little harder. It's just a fact. And this is not my opinion. I am not a left winger. I have never voted for a Democrat in my entire life. I'm a minarchist libertarian. If you're a Trump supporter or conservative, I disagree with left wingers more than you do. Okay? But it is factually accurate because they've done things like, for example, on eBay, they've taken eBay listings where a white hand holds the product. They'll take the exact same list listing and a black hand will be holding the product. Exact same listing. No change whatsoever. Same lighting in the photo, everything. And the white hand will get a lot more clicks and buys than the black hand will. So yes, it is true that if you're black in the United States or any predominantly white Western country, you're going to have to work a little harder than a typical white guy giving all other variables remaining equal. Now, I don't know what percentage harder that is. Maybe it's 10% harder. Maybe it's 30%, maybe it's 40%. I don't know what the number is. I know it's not 100%, it's not double, okay? Because you have extreme left-wingers say it's double. No, I know plenty of rich black guys uh, who are self-made. They don't work double as hard as white guys, they don't. So it's not double, but I know it's not zero. So basically what I told my son is, look, you've got two choices, okay? And when you're 18 and you move on, you move out of the house, you, you have a decision to make. You can follow the Jesse Jackson model or the Oprah Winfrey model. Again, these are dated examples. Jesse Jackson was a famous left-wing politician in the 80s and 90s. The Jesse Jackson example is, I'm black, I'm in a white man's world, that's not fucking fair, where's my free money? That's, that's the one. You stick your hand out and say, where's my free money, asshole? Fuck. Okay, that's one model, okay? The other model is the Oprah Winfrey model. Oprah Winfrey was born into poverty. She was sexually A-S-S-A-U-L-T multiple times, R-A-P-E-D multiple times, uh, lit a horrible life. She got, I mean, she, she actually got pregnant from one of these assaults and she had an abortion when she was 14. Just a horrific childhood. She became a multi-billionaire, completely 100% self-made. She said, well, I'm black and I'm a woman. She's not a black. She's black and a woman and was fat. Oh my God, three strikes against her and she became a self-made multi-billionaire, okay? Now, why did she do that? Because she said, it's not fair, but I better get to work anyway. I want the results, so I guess I better fucking get to work. That is the Oprah Winfrey model. Now, do I agree with Oprah Winfrey's politics? I do not. She's a left winger. I disagree that everything comes out of her mouth in terms of politics. I'm just talking about her success as a person, okay? I can respect someone's success and not agree with them politically. I love Arnold Schwarzenegger's success. I hate his politics, or a lot of his politics. So there you go. So I told my son, look, you've got a choice. You can say, this isn't fair, and it's not fair. It's not fair. Fairness doesn't exist. Where's my free money? And they get mad if you don't get it, okay? Or you could say, well, I gotta work harder. This isn't fair, this is bullshit, but I want the results, so I guess I better get to work. Those are your two choices. Now, the first choice is easier. A lot easier to sit on your ass and say, where's my free stuff? Where's my reparations? And white people are racists, all those things. It's easier. Here's the problem, you'll never be happy. You'll be pissed off more or less the rest of your life. And I know black people in that category. They're just angry all the time. Now the second option is harder. It's harder, but you have a shot at happiness. You got a shot. You have no shot with option one, none. You do have a shot with option two, okay? Thankfully, my son chose option two. He is financially successful, lives out of male two-point lifestyle, location dependent, makes a lot of money, very proud of him. Why am I telling you this? What does this have to do with women and logic and 
because life isn't fair. And if you're going to sit there with your arms folded, expecting women to act just like men at all times, and being pissed off when they don't, red pill guys, you will never be happy long term. It will not be in the cards for you. And I teach long-term masculine happiness. I want you to be happy. This means in order to be happy, and I had to do this myself, I had to accept that life is not fair and that there are things that I'm going to have to do that other people aren't going to have to do, and that's bullshit and unfair, and that's the way it goes. I better get to work. Throughout my life, and I'm sure you guys have seen this too, I have seen really, really pretty girls get away with shit where I had to put in lots of hard work to get the equivalent result. I've seen this with my own eyes many times. Some of you have. If you are a woman who is not really pretty or not young or maybe overweight, you've seen that too, right? Right. So it's not fair. I've seen men born with advantages or raised with advantages I didn't have. And I said, that fucking sucks. Oh, well, I better get to work. If long-term happiness is a priority for you, is that something you want? You're going to have to accept this. You're going to have to accept that the rules for men and women, sometimes in relationships, are going to be a little different. Under the alpha male 2.0 model, is a woman allowed to act irrationally? Yes, she is. Now, if she gives you too much drama, you do things like soft nexts and downgrades and drama corrective procedures. I have all kinds of techniques for this in my content, okay? We've covered all that. But you cannot expect the exact same treatment for other people. You can't do it. So instead of saying that's not fair that women are entitled, that's not the word I would use. Because guess what? There, here's the other, and this is the other, this is part two to this. There are huge disadvantages to being a woman. <laughs> I teach long-term consistent masculine happiness. Why don't I teach long-term consistent feminine happiness? Because it's not possible. I've talked about this in my book, The Unchained Man, alphamalebook.com. You can go get it. It's over 400 pages. It's $7. It'll change your life if you read that book. It's changed many people's lives. In that book, I talk about how it is not possible for women to be long-term consistently happy. They're not designed that way. Women don't want to be happy all the time. If they are, it starts to feel boring to them or something's wrong, and they will go do things to fuck up their lives so they can start complaining and get mad again. Women like a range of emotions, positive and negative. Women are not like men. So while you're sitting there with your arms folded saying, that's not fair that she's entitled, what I'm thinking is, boy, it sucks for her that she'll never be happy. When something happens in her life, she gets furious and gets red-faced and starts screaming and yelling, and when something happens in my life that's a problem, I just go, oh, that sucks. That's an advantage I have. Now, unfortunately, there are many men in the category of that as well. There are a lot of you who, when something bad happens, you get really mad and pissed off. Rah! Well, then you're fucking this up too. But you get my point. Life is all about an equal mix of pros and cons. So every time you're pissed off about some young, smoking hot 22-year-old girl who gets a bunch of free money from guys and gets free boob jobs and free cars and she gets pulled over by the cops and she doesn't get a ticket, but you have to earn the money for these things and you'll get a fucking ticket. Yeah, you need to remember what she's gonna be like when she's 45. She's gonna be so depressed she'll be ready to jump off a cliff because she's not hot anymore. But that won't happen to you as a man. Men in their 40s is fucking prime time. Men in their 40s are the shit. So it all balances out. So that's the other aspect to this. So A, life is not fair. B, it's not like she's getting a, a bunch of stuff on you that you don't get. It's not true. Next thing is when men become irrational. Uh, I have been in offices where I have had men scream, yell, rant, um, take things on desks and shove them on the floor, throw staplers at other men's in an office environment. If you think for one minute that men can't get irrational, hello, are you insane? Men can get irrational. The context is different. It is easier, generally speaking, for most men to keep a cool head when he's arguing with his wife or girlfriend. That is true. But there are a hell of a lot of men, a hell of a lot of men, who argue loudly with their girlfriends and wives and get just as emotional and just as reactive. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, they're called alpha male 1.0s, but a hell of a lot of beta males do this too. A lot of beta males, especially they are very angry, touchy guys, especially younger beta males in their 20s. It's awful. So don't overdo it with women are irrational and crazy, but men aren't. Oh no, men can be very irrational and stupid. The Western world would not be in its current state of collapse if men were rational. If men were rational, if men were like me, you wouldn't have any of these problems we'd have today. You wouldn't. Now, the world would look very different, but you wouldn't have these problems. I'm not saying you have no problems, but you wouldn't have these major problems. The next piece to this, I will submit to you that most of you, and there are exceptions to this, but the vast majority of you guys are attracted to women because they are different from us. I'm an extreme example of this. I've talked about this, how you have a scale, okay, 
from masculine to feminine. This is not about gay or straight, nothing to do with this. This is straight people, okay? But gay people fall on the scale too, but it's not about gay or straight. It's about masculine versus feminine personalities. There are men with more feminine personalities who are 100% straight. There are women who are very masculine who are 100% straight. It's not about gay or straight, okay? It's about masculine and feminine. And it's a scale. So one end you have masculine, extreme masculine. The other end you have extreme feminine. In the middle you have what's called balanced. David Data talks about this. I am on an extreme end of the masculine scale. That's just my personality plus my testosterone, my lifestyle, all those things. Okay, I'm an extreme end of the masculine scale. What that means is I'm attracted to extreme feminine. My wife, Pink Firefly, is on the extreme opposite end. She's on the extreme feminine side of the scale. Now that means two things, one good, one bad. The good news is that means our attraction for each other is ridiculously high. Um, we've been together eight years. We still have sex several times a week and we're excited to do it with each other. How many couples do you know <laughs> Uh, seriously, who've been together eight years and still have sex several times a week and are excited to do it. They're not doing like, oh, I gotta, I gotta fuck my husband to shut him up. No, 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 no. We have a, a ridiculous amount of attraction for each other even though we've been together for eight years, seven years, seven, eight years, I forget. I probably shouldn't forget, but I do. The bad news is we have communication problems and I've talked about this where I'm going a little outside the scope of this podcast. But my point is that if Pink Firefly was masculine, we would have never gotten past the second date. I'm not attracted sexually to masculine women. I like masculine women in my personal life and in my work life. I love masculine women in my work life. They're fantastic. They're fantastic. I love working with them. But dating them, having sex with them, I have no interest. I'm not attracted because you are attracted to the opposite. If you're a more feminine beta male type guy, guess what women you tend to be attracted to? Tough, charged, confident, masculine, take charge chicks, right? Right, so you're attracted to the opposite. So for every man who bitches and moans that women are irrational and crazy and she won't calm down, and there's another man, probably the same man, who has attracted her because of those traits. Not because she's mad and screaming at you, but because she's demonstrating feminine traits. Make sense? If a woman was exactly just like you, you would not be attracted to her, with rare exception. There are rare exceptions where that is the case, but the vast majority of men in the world are attracted to women who are not like them. I'm actually attracted to women not only who are my personality opposite, but also my physical opposite. I'm a big guy, I'm a big, big guy with dark hair, okay? I like little teeny tiny women who are really short, little tiny builds with big asses and blonde hair and brown eyes. I have blue eyes. Blue eyes are hot, brown eyes are even hotter to me. That's what I like. I'm attracted to my physical opposite. I don't want to have sex with a woman who looks just like me, not literally just like me, but you get my point. A woman who is exactly my height, exactly my build, same color of hair, same color of eyes, even if she was gorgeous, I wouldn't be attracted. I'm attracted to the opposite, so are you. So you cannot say, I want someone with these opposite qualities, but I want them to not have any of the negative qualities that are also part of that opposite. Make sense? So if I like feminine girly girls, and I do, I can't say, I can't say, I want a feminine girly girl who is 100% logical and rational all the time, just like me. Does exist, okay? Uh, someday when they make sex robots, then you can get that. But until then, that doesn't exist. So you have to accept this, okay? It's not about she's entitled and I'm not. It's about you accepting the realities of what you're attracted to. And I've had to wrestle with this, I'll be honest with you, for years, I had to wrestle with the fact that I'm attracted to these extremely girly feminine girls who act feminine in ways sometimes I don't like. I just, I'm attracted to the things I don't like. Not literally, but you get my point. And maybe you're not as masculine as me. Most of you probably aren't. So you're probably not attracted to as feminine girly girls as I am. I mean, just by looking at my wife, you can tell how feminine she is. You can just look at a picture of her. But you're still gonna run into the same issue. And that's normal. And as I've always said, if you don't wanna do any work whatsoever, then just stay single forever. That won't make you happy long-term for most men post age 40, but that's an option. If you don't wanna do the work, then just have FBs or sugar babies and just do that the rest of your life. Okay, fine, you want to deal with that. Even then you'll have to deal with a little bit. <laughs> you think FBs can't be emotional or irrational? Hello, yes they can. The difference is you usually don't care. You're like, all right, go be irrational, I don't care. So I hope that clears that up. I know there's a lot of you who sympathize with what John Clancy said in that comment. And I just want you to be aware that there's more to the story than just, this isn't fair. Fairness doesn't exist. Cool? Cool. All right, see you next podcast. Have fun. Bye.